Okay, here's a shot of this tool post grinder. And all I did, I started with uh, just a Harbor Freight uh, die grinder. I've got a couple O-rings holding the lever down. I did have to trim a little bit of length off the, uh, off the lever. And just a couple of aluminum blocks bored out to the same diameter as the body of the grinder and split with a couple of uh, pinch bolts, cap screws. And I've got a, uh, just a piece of aluminum angle and just milled out. Uh, and there's the uh, T-nut and hold down uh, nut for the so it'll mount on the uh, compound. And then I put a little ball valve here so that you don't have to try to mess with the with the paddle lever. You can just regulate it with the ball valve and just an extra short piece of uh, air hose. And tell you what, this thing works pretty good. Um, you know, for a low cost, um, you know, good solid mount. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm happy with the way it works. Oh, and then I made a dressing tool, just a piece of three quarter shaft cross drilled. And I just put a, um, uh, just a El Cheapo, uh, diamond point dresser in here with a little set screw on the end. Just... All right. So this is actually working pretty good. I don't know if you can see that, if it's showing up on the camera or not, but you can see the uh, the ring just kind of floats as, uh, as I'm preloading the jaws. And I'm, I'm not going to put a lot on here. I'm just, just taking the backlash out. And uh, then I'll come back and snug the bolts down. And I've got plenty of clearance to work so I can get deep enough because I've got to be able to clear the uh, the collet, and I might even have to extend the grinder out a little bit because I got to get way back in there for the primary jaws. They're quite a ways back in there, and they're much higher than the uh, than the secondary uh, cap jaws uh, that have all the wear on them. Okay, here we go. Here's my setup for dressing the grinding wheel. I got a diamond dresser in the chuck there. Got the stone on there. Got everything covered. <laughs> I think I used every rag in the shop here. So I'm just going handheld here, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to film this or not. I probably wanna don't want to be distracted so I'll let you guys know in a couple minutes how this works out <laughs> okay okay got the stone dressed it was relatively uneventful <laughs> made a nice mess I'll probably vacuum that a little bit before I change the setup here so I had my safety glasses on and face shield <laughs> I wasn't taking any chances in case that stone explodes. I don't think these are very high quality and that wouldn't have been ha pleasant to have that blow up in your face, but it went okay. So, all right, I'm gonna change the setup here so we can start our first grind. Hopefully, I wasn't sure how much uh, surface I was gonna need. Um, that's about not quite a quarter inch wide. So yeah, if I, I'll probably have to repeat this process a couple times. I got all day to do this, so I've never done one of these before, so <laughs> learn as we go. Alrighty.
we're getting closer. I don't know if you can see it there. You can see the grinding mark on the last serration of the jaw there. We're about halfway touched up on that jaw. So I've got a ways to go. Just letting the uh, compressor <laughs> catch up. You need a big air compressor uh, to run these die grinders. And uh, I've got a big one and it's been running full time. It's keeping up. I'm just gonna give it a little break here. All right. Another 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe we'll have it. Okay guys, so I've got a piece of drill blank in here, 916 drill blank. Got our dial indicator set up and I've been taking numerous measurements here. We're not done yet, so I'll take a look at what we got here. So that's about two thousandths and it's consistent all the way out to the end of the, uh, the rod. And I've tried different size shafts. Got a piece of one inch chrome here. It's actually worse with the larger diameter. So I think what's happening is I got one jaw that's either a little high or a little low. Um, so I'm gonna do some more grinding. One of the uh, challenges has been this preload ring. I, I, I had a tough time laying out the uh, the hole spacing. Um, I used a protractor center head and a set of dividers to try to get them you know, as close to the 120 degree separation as possible. I didn't want to put the rotary head on the mill. Um, then I cut this out with, uh, with the jigsaw and uh, used a uh, compass to, uh, to draw out the circle. So I'm going to enlarge this hole a little bit more. <laughs> I've already enlarged these guys. You can see I'm running out of meat here. I made this ring just a little bit too big. So I think what's happening, I'm getting a little bit of jaw binding um, because there's a little bit of discrepancy in this uh, preload ring. So I'm going to try to get it to float a little better and uh, set up the preload again. Make another couple more passes with the uh, with the tool post grinder here and keep my fingers crossed and <laughs> see what we come up with. Yeah, I did have originally this ring, I had the uh, the holes were even smaller and it had less floating capability and about halfway through the grind process I, I took some measurements and holy smokes I was way off. So that's where I started enlarging these holes and paying more attention to you know, how much preload I had on the jaws and so forth. So anyways, um, yeah, a couple steps backwards and, and we'll do some more grinding and hopefully we can get that last couple thou out of there. <laughs> 